Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Ali Gulzar and today I'll be demonstrating our tool Big Debug which enables interactive debugging for big data processing in Apache Spark. This tool was built by Software Engineering Group and the Database Systems Group at UCLA. So before I go into the details of this tool, let me briefly go over a running example that I'll be using throughout this demonstration. In this example, I'm computing the average age of the students per college year. The dataset that I'm using contains rows where each row contains the serial number, the name of the student, the year the student is in, and the date of birth of the student. The program that I've written first extracts the college year and the date of birth of the student at line number 4. It then finds the age of the student by subtracting the current age, the current date from the date of birth. At line number 7, it groups the data by key where key is the college year. At line number 8, it applies a map operation to find, to find the average age of all the students per key. So when I run this program on Apache Spark, Spark crashes by giving out this information. And with this information, it is extremely hard for me to figure out the intermediate input records that are responsible for this crash. And since the data has gone through a series of transformations, it is also extremely hard for me to identify the input records that is causing the crash. And when such kind of crashes occur, all the intermediate records are being thrown away by Spark wasting computations. Let me actually demonstrate this by actually running it on the Apache Spark. So this is the program that I've mentioned in the running example. The data set that I'm using contains a data record which, is, which won't be able to parse by this program. And in the lower window, as you can see, the log emitted by Apache Spark. So at this point, the program has crashed and Spark throws away all the computation. And the only information I see is the intermediate runtime information of the stack traces of Spike Spark. So right now it is extremely hard for me to figure out what was the problem with the data. And if the data is in contains billions of records, it is extremely hard for me to find out the exact record causing the program to crash. So to overcome the challenges of debugging, in big data processing frameworks like Apache Spark, we have provided a series of interactive debugging features. Our tool Big Debug provides simulated breakpoints, which enable traditional breakpoint debugging in Apache Spark. Its guarded watch point feature allows users to inspect, inspect intermediate program state without too much overhead. Its crash culprit identification and remediation feature identifies the precise intermediate records that is causing the program to crash. Find grade latency alert feature allows user to find the processing time of each transformation per record. And our new debugging feature pinpoints the precise input records responsible for a faulty output. In the first part of this demonstration, I will demonstrate big debug simulated breakpoint and guarded watch point feature on our running example. Going back to our running example, I've already placed a watch point and a simulated breakpoint in our program. So a watch point in Big Debug takes in a guard predicate. This guard predicate will filter out all the intermediate records that do not have these college year, sophomore, freshman, junior, and senior year string in them. And also I've placed a breakpoint using a simulated breakpoint API of Big Debug. Both of these APIs are provided as an extension over the normal RDD interface of Spark. So now run the program and move to the user interface of Big Debug. On this interface, as you can see on the left hand side, it provides a breakpoint control window in which you can resume or step over, over the breakpoint. In the right hand side, you can see a code editor window in which you can see the code that has been running. And on the left lower side, you can see a directed acyclic graphical representation of the workflow. Blue boxes here represent the normal transformation where green and yellow represents watch point and simulated breakpoint respectively. 
let's update this page and perform step over and resume over the breakpoints. So in the code editor window, you can see the breakpoint is in place at 206 and the next instruction that's going to be executed is at line 207. So simulate breakpoint provides this illusion that the breakpoint is in place, but the process is still running in the background. So when we do step over, we'll move to the next instruction. So now we have moved from instruction 206 to instruction 207 on the group by operation. And as soon as we press resume, we will join the previous operation running in the background and get the results as soon as possible. So as you can see, the results are available here. One thing to note here is that the average is calculated for each key is in negative, which is obviously not correct. And we're going to leverage the situation to perform real time code fix in the next step. So let's stop this execution here and rerun the program again. This time I will show you how we can update the guard predicate for watchpoint dynamically. So we'll go into this watchpoint window, the green box here, and we'll see all the records that have been captured up till this point. So right now nothing has been captured and we're gonna update this card. So from this point onwards, we want to capture all the records that have junior in them. And we'll submit this new guard to the cluster. As soon as I press, as I press submit new guard, this new function will be compiled and then sent to all the executors. And from this point onwards, all the records that kept that are that passes this new guard will be captured and shown to the user. So let's go into this watch point and see what records have been captured up till this point. So as you can see, all the records that have junior in them are being captured, and also the record that was that passes the old guard were captured at this point. So this was the record that would capture the previous guard and then we implemented a new guard and from that point onwards only the records that passes the new guard are captured such as these. So as you can see, you can see the ages are all negative. So let's use our breakpoint real time code fix feature to fix this bug. So we know that the ages are all in negative and the breakpoint is in place at this point. Now we'll move into one of these operations and fix the code for these operations. So move into the map operation. In this operation, we were previously iterating over all the ages of the students for that particular key group and computing the average. Now we will replace this operation with an average similar to the previous one, but we want to add a negative one so that all the ages which are in negative will be transformed back into the positive. And we will submit this new code. So this new code for this map operation will be compiled locally and then sent to all the executors. So now the new code is in place for map operation. And the breakpoint is in place at line 206 here. So from now onwards, if we press resume, Big Debug would start the computation from the latest materialization point, which is in this case the breakpoint here and then use the newly updated code in the map to compute the latest results. So let's press resume and compute the results. And go back to the IDE to see the final results. So as you can see, the results are being computed and these results have positive average ages, which is correct, which means that the new code was executed in the map operation. So in this way you can update the code on the fly when the breakpoint is in place. In this section of the demonstration I will explain how crash culprit identification and remediation feature of Big Debug can be helpful when a program crashes in Apache Spark. So going back to our example, like I've said before that when a crash occurs in Apache Spark, Spark throws away all the computations up till that point. We're going to run the same program again but with Big Debug to see the exact records causing the crash and the input record responsible for that particular crash. At this point, when a crash occurs, Big Debug allows Spark to continue the execution with the correct records and reports the 
crash inducing input records to the user. So I've run the program and now I'll move to the graphical user interface of Big Debug to see the exact records called in the crash. So as you can see, the crashing transformation has turned red in this case, and you will also see the exact line number where the crash has occurred. Now I'll move into this box to see the exact record causing the crash. So as you can see, this was the record that has caused the crash. And the reason behind this crash is that the tuple, the second element of this tuple was expected to be a date, but the input data set contains, for this particular record contains the actual age of the student. So in order to see which are the input records responsible to create this particular intermediate crash inducing record, we'll use trace to input button to invoke a tracing query which will invoke a backward trace up till the input records. So we'll click this button and go back to the IDE to see the exact record causing the crash. So this was the exact record in the in input data set which has caused, caused the intermediate input record to crash. So we can use this feature to find out the input records that are responsible to per for producing the intermediate crash inducing records. So at this point we can go into the map again and we have two options to recover from this crash. One option is to skip this record entirely and allow the program to continue the execution with the rest of the records so that this record won't be contributing towards the final output. So we can skip this record and go back to our program to see the final output. So as you can see, the record was skipped and the final output was generated. So let's terminate this program and run the program again. And then this time we can modify the record. So we'll go into this map transformation again. And this time we'll replace this 20 year with a date of birth. Let's say a one, one and one nine nine eight. And then we'll use this age and modify this record and submit it back into the pipeline so that this record can contribute towards the final output. So once I press the modify button, this record would be sent back into this its appropriate worker and the worker would start using that record to compute the final output. Going back to the IDE. So Big Debug has used the newly provided modified record to compute the final output in this case. So this feature can be useful when a user wants to modify the records on the fly, which has caused a crash, or a user can also skip these records entirely. Big Debug's fine grain latency alert allows users to see the processing time for each record on a certain transformation. So we're going to use the same running example and I have created a version of this running example in which I have introduced some latency for some particular records. So let's run this program and see the latency for those records. So Big Debug reports the latency of the records which are two standard deviations above the average processing time of all the records. So let's move into the UI for Big Debug and see the processing time for the straggling records. So on the lower part of this page, you can see the tasks numbers and the time it takes to compute the type task num tasks. And we're gonna go into one of the tasks and select the RDD on which we have enabled the latency. And here you can see all the records that have taken two deviations more than the average processing time. And this graph is being updated live. So all the records that are taking more are being pushed onto this graph. So from this graph, a user can see all the records that are slowing down the processing of the, comp of the program. In the fourth section of this demonstration, we will introduce a new automated debugging feature in Big Debug, which allows users to find the precise input records responsible for a faulty output. So going back to our running example, you might have noticed that the average age of junior year students are actually greater than the average age of senior year students. This looks suspicious. In order to test this output, we have written a test function which checks that the average age of the junior students should always be less than 23. 
we will actually use this test function to find out the faulty output records and then apply a backward trace on the faulty output to see the input record responsible for creating that faulty output. So we'll run this automated process using this test function, the program and the regional data set. In this procedure, it first, it first finds the exact output which is causing the fault and then it applies backward trace on the faulty output to find some subset of inputs responsible for creating that faulty output, in this case the average age of junior year students. Later on, on that backward trace, it applies delta debugging, a binary search-like strategy which isolates the precise input responsible for creating a higher average age value. So in this case, it's applying a binary search on all the inputs and eventually finds the exact input record responsible for creating a faulty output. In this case, the input record contains 000 as the date of birth, which leads to a average which leads to a student age of 2000 years, which which is reflected into the average age value of the junior year students, which is greater than the senior year students. So this is the input record which is responsible for a faulty output record. In the last section of the demonstration, I will explain how we can use Big Debug to perform backward and forward tracing on a Spark program. For this purpose, I'll be using a Hello World program for big data processing, which is word count. A word count program finds the count of every unique word in an input text file. So I've already ran a program and I have the final output in which, as you can see, the count of every unique word is displayed. So in this case, the count for AND is 10 and the count for machine is 1. So we'll use this output AND and its count 10 to perform a backward trace on this output. And we will find all, all the intermediate inputs and the final input that is actually responsible for creating this particular output. So we'll go one step at a time from the final output to an intermediate input which is responsible for this record. So now we have performed this trace one step backwards and we'll see all the intermediate input records responsible for the final output. So you can see that AND1, AND2, AND, AND7, these are the three records that were responsible these were the three intermediate records that were responsible for the final output. So now we'll go all the way back to the actual input responsible for the final output. So we'll go one step at a time and we'll retrieve the final input, the actual input responsible for the final output. So in this case, all of these lines were responsible for the final output of AND and its count 10. So every single line contains AND in this case, like this, AND. You can also find AND in every single line. So from this point, we have the input which is responsible for the final output. Now we can perform a forward trace of one of these input files. So let's select this line and perform a forward trace on this line. So in this case, we'll go ahead and select this line and perform a forward trace all the way to the output. So in this case, this line has and spark streaming for stream processing as the input line and these are the words so when we do forward trace on this line we'll see all of these words in the final output so as you can see the input line contained these words and these were the final output of the forward trace of that line These tracing capabilities enhance the effectiveness of debugging in Big Debug. Big Debug is publicly available for download at the following link. This link also contains a step by step tutorial for Big Debug. Thank you for listening to this demonstration.